Using sound to heal the body. Does it really work? Speaking to Spirits talks about sound therapy. Everybody, this is Colleen with Speaking of Spirits, and I'm with here with Kate. Hi, guys. <laughs> we are going to talk about um, sound therapy, sound healing. Um, I think it's an interesting topic, and both of us have done sound therapy, right? Yep, we have. You Do you practice it, or have you only gone to it? I currently have only gone to it. Um, being a Gemini, I want to learn all the things. So eventually I would love to get there. But yeah, I've only gone to sound therapy sessions. Okay. Yeah. And I have too. And, and for our listeners out there who maybe have thought about it and have never like pulled the trigger to do it, do it. It's, you feel so light and good when you come out of it. It's, it's really a, an amazing session, either with a group of people or by yourself. It's really amazing to find a practitioner. It makes you feel that good. So, yeah. So we were going to talk about the different hurts. Um, but I do have a little bit of a warning for you from, I, I go to, um, it's, it's, and I don't remember exactly the, the term for it. But it's it's part of um, a therapy to kind of reset for um, maybe anxiety or it's it's really cool. I go through it for PTSD and um, the VA sent me to a therapist who does this. And um, you have um, sensors like on your head and then you're listening to sound. And then they just have a screen going where you're just watching patterns. It's no, it's nothing. And, but it's resetting the switches in your brain to get you back to level because we're right brain and left brain. And if you get too left or too far, right, it can mess with you. And what they try to do through these therapy sessions th through this sound is every time your brain starts going right or left and not staying in the middle, it skips the music and it resets you. You don't even, you're not even aware of it, but you do when you come out of there, you're like, Dan, there's nothing I can't do. I feel invincible. You feel so good. And it is a PTSD cognitive thing that the VA sends us through. And it, and I love it. Um, but so he cautioned me about listening to low frequency. Um, below, what is it? 432. We were talking about Kate. Yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. He he did say that he's had patients come into his office in full-blown psychosis if they listen below 432. Now, I don't know if they're listening for a long time. I don't know exactly what that means. Because when I was looking at sound therapy online to figure out what other types of sound therapy are there, there's really low frequency sound for a variety of different things. So obviously it's do, it is helping some people, but I wanted to throw that caution out there that maybe speak with um, somebody who does sound therapy, who's a medically trained person. If you have an ailment that could be triggered by low sound. Um, I, I don't know. We're not doctors. No, uh, like everything so, you got to do your research. Like, yeah, yeah do your research. So um, for example, 40 Hertz. They have found that flickering lights and sounds at 40 hertz has been used in Alzheimer's therapy um, to stimulate an increase, uh, an increased neural response, and it fights symptoms of dementia. Who That's knew? Amazing. Yeah, isn't it? It sound therapy is really, really amazing. It really, really is. Um, uh, 174 hertz is one of the, the. I think they call it sulfagio. Self, Frequency? I don't know how to pronounce it, but yeah, that's what exactly what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a series of tones in sacred music that is believed to be an alternative medicine. So it actually heals the body. 174 hertz is associated with the reduction of both pain and stress. That sounds amazing to me. I mean, yeah, 
People use it to help migraines. Um, some people even claim so far that it's like a natural anesthesia. I don't, I wouldn't go that far, but like it, whatever state it puts you in, it's a very deep state that you go. That's amazing. Um, another 285 hertz is solfeggio frequency is, they say instrumental, that it can heal cuts and burns and ailments. I mean, just to me, it's, it's fascinating to think that frequencies of sound can heal like that. Mm -hmm. But why not? Right? Yeah, it's it's just like every like I I can't wait for a hundred years from now when we learn so much more. I know I won't be around, but like I wanna know what they discover, like how these healing frequencies like actually work. Like we've come so far in modern medicine just to see how far like some of these therapies that people are like, oh that's kind of like in woo woo land, like how much it's gonna have validity in the future. Yeah, exactly. Um, they have found that 366 mega or 396 hertz uh, removes fear and negative feelings. Um, also balances the root chakra. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives you more a uh, joyful outlook on life. If you're listening to that again, I'm I am prefacing this with what this doctor has told me. So just be careful with these lower frequencies. 470, 17 hertz is, it focuses on physical ailments. So if you have trauma, um, it's supposed to what, uh, dissolve emotional blockages. Yeah. And I mean, who doesn't have that, right? <laughs> right. Uh, this is supposed to be, I have PTSD. This is supposed to be one of the healing frequencies that helps really well with PTSD. So, or like you were saying, just kind of any traumatic experiences. Yeah. Um, and 432 hertz is that mental and emotional clarity. And, and that's where I think um, most of at 432 and higher is that cerebral um, part of the brain. I do know. So he sent me a link on YouTube of what to listen to. Um, and he uses it like his kids when they're in college to study for an exam because they would retain information more. So I thought, okay, I have so many different scientific reports I have to read and I can't retain all of it. I don't, there's just only so much my little brain can handle. Right. So I started listening to this meditation music that he gave me on YouTube and oh my God, I, it's like I can slam through these reports and comprehend what was going on. Now I'm talking about, I've had five different head injuries. So I've had, I've had one TBI and then probably two TBIs. I got kicked in the head by a horse. And so I, that, that was a couple of year of pretty bad, like memory loss and everything else going on and mixing up words and speaking weird. Like I thought it was fine. I wasn't. So, so I've had some head injuries and I find that that music helps me retain more. That's why I always have to have notes because I can't, I just can't retain anything anymore. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's interesting at this frequency at 432 I don't know where this comes from, but it's supposed that this was like when humans first had music, this was the loveliest of notes. Like this was like almost the original kind of sound that started off before it dove into other sounds. Now, how true that is, I'm sure it's not, but I think it's just a beautiful thought about sound frequencies. Well, that's interesting because what I read was opera singers use 432 prior to a performance. Oh, yeah. Okay, so maybe there is something there. But yeah. yeah, I think that maybe there is. Um, so 440 hertz is also um, cerebral music that aids in cognitive development. So there's a lot of these. Um, but this one is interesting. Or uh, 528 hertz. Yeah, you know this one, huh? Talk about it. Um, so this one from what I've learned is that it supposedly can bring your DNA back to its original perfect state. And then it is also the one that activates like imagination, creativity, um, 
hop uh, like to operate at your highest self. That's what I learned about this frequency. Yeah, it's also supposed to be it's, it's they call it the miracle note. Like if you're listening at 528 is the miracle note. It's it's used in native populations as a sound associated with blessings since before written word. They oh. would use that sound for a blessing. So that's like that's amazing to me, you know. Um so it still carries forward. Uh let's see. 639 hertz. Again, these higher ranges, more positivity, right? Positive feelings, um, clear communication is supposed to help kind of unblock that ability to, to, uh, so maybe like prior to a big speech that you'd have to give in front of an audience or something like that, that would be the sound that you'd look, the, the sound that you'd want to listen to to help unblock that and be able to have that that communication line open. Yeah. It's also one where if you're looking at a cellular level, it's supposed to help the cell communicate with the environment. So it's like, as we're going up in these frequencies, we're noticing that like the, uh, the job of the cell gets higher and higher. Like it's doing the harder work as we go up, which I think is really fascinating. 852 hertz is associated with redirecting the mind away from overthinking. And this is me. I'm like, I'm just think to death to the point where I just, I get anxiety. And it's crazy because 99.9% .9 of the time, what I'm worried about never happens. My mom, classic non worry Even my dad, my dad was a Scorpio and he, He's like, God, you worry about everything. And I'm like, I need to prepare. I need to prepare. He's like, I just. Mean. Yeah. Yeah. Is that I, you? Yeah. I get so bad. So I'm like, I'm worried about all the different ways something can go out. So by the time I actually talk to someone, I've probably rehearsed this conversation like 300 different ways in the different possibilities it could turn out. You know, I mean, I'm that person who will sit 30 minutes over a text that's very simple. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, what if? And then it always turns out. I would good. never have guessed that about you. Isn't yeah. that interesting? <laughs> yeah. That's so interesting. It's amazing. You can podcast, Kate. So, I mean, you know, yeah. this one is cool to me. 963 hertz. They yes. call it the frequency of the gods. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. And of the penal gland, which is supposed to be our source of connection, right? Like to spirituality and um, to whatever you believe in is next, whatever's higher. That's supposed to be wow. our connection. Yeah. That's very cool. Um, and some of the things that I want to talk a little bit about in areas of human medicine, how healing frequencies are practiced. And I want to, so just to listen, the listeners, I want you if you're interested in doing this, um, there's an article called The Healing Frequencies of the Body, and there's a full list and benefits. And this this writer, um, Luke Ocean, is a registered yoga teacher. Um, he wrote a lot of this information. I've kind of gleaned it from all over the place, but this is a really amazing article. I have quite a few here that I've been reading. And they talk about um, stroke therapy like recovery. They use music now to help stroke patients and it's helping heal. Um, uh, it also enhances acupuncture. Now, if you've ever had, have you had acupuncture done? No, I'm too scared. <laughs> oh my God. You don't feel it. Uh -huh. You don't feel it at all. No, uh -huh. I've had it done many, many times. Actually, one guy left a needle sticking in my head. He had to call me afterwards and I'm in my, he goes, did I leave a needle in your head? <laughs> I had a little like, yeah, it's like that long. You just pluck it out. You don't feel it. Oh my god! You don't gosh. feel them go in and out. They're like, they're like a human hair. They're so thin that you don't feel it. And then they, the way they spiral them in. Um, some of the anxiety release you get from acupuncture is phenomenal. It really can just clear you, right? Um, yeah. They use it for um, kids with autism. Um, for cancer patients now, they're finding that some cancers are can be targeted by sound and they don't need chemo, aggressive chemo. Oh my gosh, that is Isn't changing. that incredible? Yeah. yeah. So, well, think about sound, right? Sound can break glass. 
Yeah. There's all these things that sound can do. So if it can do something like that, think of how powerful it can be in the right setting. Um, yeah. Um, it can. Now, the one thing, it, the brave brain waves, it alters your brain waves. And that's the therapy for PTSD that I go through where you're you're being reset. You're just resetting constantly. And it's, it's, it's really, it's not it. I mean, you're not even, it's funny too, because as you go more and more through that therapy, you start falling asleep. And I even asked him and I don't sleep ever. I'm never relaxed enough. And I said, Oh, did it not work? Cause I fell asleep. He goes, no, it works better if you fall asleep because mm -hmm. it's, you're, you're not, you're, you're in that, that relaxed state and you're not fighting it. Because I was listening to all the skips in the music. Going, damn, it skips all the time. He goes, yeah, it's trying to reset you. And you're just, you're fighting it. <laughs> and so finally, as I got more and more weeks into it and more and more comfortable, I started falling asleep. And, and that's, boy, I'll tell you, I walked out of there feeling top of the world. So if you can find somebody who does PTSD sound therapy like that, go. It's worth every penny. Um, increased neurogenesis. So it can promote neuro health, right? Like we said, reduce stress. Um, and it can decrease the reception of pain, the perception of pain. Um, that to me is fascinating because I've been through a lot of pain with different physical stuff and surgeries and this and that. And the thought of using sound to help decrease pain. And you were saying earlier that they're using it as what? Um, anesthesia a natural so i don't know if they're actually performing procedures during this time okay. or not but it's reported to put you in such a deep state that they're able to do some sort of work so i don't know how internal that gets or superficial you know stuff okay but yeah that's very cool um so i wanted to talk a little bit about our personal experiences with going to sound therapy bath sound they call it a bath but it's it's not i mean it's it's what else is the terminology for it it's a sound yeah. healing yeah i would just say sound healing the bath part is supposed to be because it's a cleansing of the aura and the energies around you and that's okay thank you yeah yeah so I've been to a few here in town. They're very different from each other, and they're, bo they're both incredible. Um, describe some of the ones you've been to. Um, so most of the ones I have been to have been solely for the purpose of aligning your chakra. Um, and so when you sa like show up to a sound bath, you bring your own mats, you bring your own pillows, you get comfy on the floor. Um, when I do sound baths, it feels so easy to get into meditation, like whatever frequencies they are using, it usually starts pretty high. And I notice myself just drift away. And there's been a couple where like, I come back to it. And I'm like, did we start kind of thing? Like, but it's been a whole hour. Um, but my meditations and visualizations are so clear during the other ones that I've been to. Like it just puts you on a whole nother level spiritually, I believe. How were you? Cool. Yeah. The first one I went to, um, it was really interesting because they didn't do just singing bowls. They had um, a what do you call those? The Australian, the thing that like they use the Aborigines use the. Oh, I don't know what it's uh, called, but you know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, they had one of those. They had singing bowls. They had drums. They had just a variety of instruments and it wasn't guided at all. It was just music. Right. And, and man, that it really was an incredible session. It really was just floating through all of the different sounds and just, but I didn't meditate. I was just so consumed with the sound that I was just listening to every note. It was incredible. I've been to another one at one of the studios that you're free. You, I don't know if we can say their name. Can we I give them a shout out? Oh, okay. uh, yeah, we will ask. Maybe next time we'll give a shout out. Yeah, Just, maybe next time. But yeah. they do sound frequency stuff there. And it's it was a, a guided meditation session with the sound, the singing bowls. And it um, I really 
took off on a journey. It, it was incredible. I finally, maybe I just let myself go that time. Um, I can't, I can't get laid down because I can't get back off of the floor with my imbalance issues, but I sat and I just was so relaxed and so comfy. And she just guided you through journey and had you connect with um, people in your past. And it was really fascinating because the people I connected with, I don't, I've never met, but they're your spirit guides and they're in your family trees. So I thought it was kind of fascinating, but um, yeah, I, I think both guided and non-guided have their benefits to allow the non-guided meditation allows you just to, just to go on your own thing, your own journey. Yeah. My favorite is when they're guided for 15 minutes and then they let you go. Like I almost have to have someone talking so that I can switch my mind off so that I can just allow myself to go through the process. Um, and I do think there's benefits to both though, because I've done fully guided meditations and I've done the work that I felt like was needed to be done. And when you do the unguided, it's like you just go somewhere and you're like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Like, I didn't know that was a place I needed to go to. I didn't know that was healing I needed. It's just, it's incredible. Yeah, it is pretty incredible. I do. Um, if you guys have never, if our listeners, um, if you've never, um, if you've never done it, I encourage you to try it and try it more than once because you may not get all the benefits out at the first time. Try it. Try it a couple of times. See what you think. And then listen, there's YouTube channels out there for for listening and you don't have to meditate. Like I said, I'm reading reports and stuff and I'm finding that I'm I'm comprehending more of the analytical data a little easier. I'm I'm retaining more of the information I'm getting through. I mean, some of my reports are binders like that and it's like oh my god you know you get this stuff and you're like it's so overwhelming and i can get four or five of those reports a week and i've got to get through this stuff and generate and read it and retain it and ask questions about it and i'm finding that if i listen to this stuff while i'm doing that kind of work i'm it's easier for me um my the guy that i go to for that ptsd sound therapy said that his like i said his kids uses it they use it when they're in college to help them cram for exams and study and retain more so um anyway i just it's interesting i think it, it has a place in classrooms i think i wish m more classes would do something like this when kids are trying to study well and it's read what and we, yeah it's what we do with kids anyways like when kids are born people really say the importance of classical music you have them fall asleep to classical music. You have them learn to classical music. Like that's just another spot where I think it's more common that people practice, but may not realize they're practicing a type of um, therapy, like sound therapy. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 Well, we hope you enjoyed the topic. I'd like to hear from you guys. Please subscribe to the channel. We really, really, really need you. And we enjoy doing these podcasts for you. So we do. Thank you, and we're signing off. You've been listening to Speaking of Spirits, powered by Pocatello Paranormal Research in Pocatello, Idaho. Thank you for joining us today. We're glad you could be here. If you're enjoying the podcast, please do us a favor and go to whatever platform you are listening to the podcast on and give us a review. We prefer the five-star reviews. This helps us know how we're doing, and it helps others to find the podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you on our next podcast.